Good morning, baseball fans, and welcome back to Dan's Vintage Baseball PC. Don't be fooled by the fancy name. It's just me and some baseball cards. And excitedly today, it's uh, Ian and his uh, Joe DiMaggio baseball cards. Um, so we'll get to Ian in a few minutes, but I uh, just want to do the, uh, the intro. Um, Joe DiMaggio is uh, obviously extraordinarily famous player um but let me go to the uh let me go back to here grew up in uh, san francisco he was born in 1914. his father was a fisherman his fa mother and father were italian immigrants uh he was not uh, didn't take well to the fishing part of things but uh, started playing baseball at an early age um his older brother uh, was vince dimaggio vince dimaggio was playing for the san francisco seals and got his brother a tryout and uh, Joe actually did very, very well for San Francisco and played a couple of years there. Um, in his final season in San Francisco in 1935, I think he broke literally all the records for the franchise. The Yankees brought the scouts over and signed him. And he uh, played in 1936, which is his rookie year. Um, DiMaggio played 13 seasons. Uh, he appeared in 10 World Series, uh, winning nine of them. He won three Most Valuable Player awards, uh, if not for losing three years of his career in um, World War II. He would have uh, much greater numbers, but as you can see there, he's got almost an 80 war, uh, 2,200 hits, 361 home runs, which we'll <clears throat> sure talk about his, his fewer home runs than should be because he played in Yankee Stadium. But uh, let's look at his, um, his numbers here. Uh, they're pretty, pretty spectacular. As you can see, his rookie season, 29, 125, 323 in the traditional stats, um, but a 928 OPS. Eighth in the MVP voting, all-star. Um, that's the other thing is DiMaggio played 13 seasons. He was an all-star 13 times. Um, if there was a rookie of the year back in 36, he sure he would have won it. Now, 37 is an interesting year because um, absolutely phenomenal numbers. As you can see, um, though, MVP2. Uh, the MVP in 1937 was won by Charlie Geringer uh, from Detroit, even though the Yankees won the pennant. And DiMaggio put up numbers like uh, 46 home runs, 167 RBIs, and 151 runs scored, uh, led the league. But, you know, being cheated out of a uh, MVP would come back to help him later on in his career because in 1947 he won the MVP when Ted Williams really should should have won the MVP. Um DiMaggio has the distinction of winning the World Series in his first three seasons, 36, 37, and 38, uh, and in his final three seasons, 49, 50, and 51. And the, he retired in 1951, as you can see, his numbers uh, fell off quite a bit. Uh, he was 36 years old, and he said he'd had enough of baseball. It was no longer fun. And um, the Yankees went on to win the World Series the two years after DiMaggio left. Uh, his post Baseball life uh, was a little bit, um, a little bit odd. Uh, he married Marilyn Monroe, the celebrity. They were married for only a couple of months, um, but he he was, you know, loved her his, his entire rest of his life. Uh, as a kid growing up in New York, I saw Joe DiMaggio on um, coffee commercials. He was a, a sponsor for uh, Mister Coffee. And uh, he also had a bank. I don't remember which bank it was, but DiMaggio was on TV a lot when I was a kid. Uh, and he showed up at all the Yankees old-timers games. In 1968-69, uh, he was a coach for the Oakland A's. And the reason for that was because as a 13-year player, he didn't have the maximum um, pension. So he played two, he didn't play two more years, but he coached two more years in the major leagues, putting himself in a position to be a 15-year major leaguer, and they got the maximum pension. He was obviously uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame at the earliest possible time. As you can see, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1955, uh, not on the maximum number of ballots, which is kind of amusing and annoying in both times. Uh, he passed away in 1999 at the age of 84. He had been living uh, with some issues regarding the fact that he was a smoker his entire life. Uh, and I believe he died of lung cancer or something related to that. But uh, DiMaggio was a, a larger-than-life figure. He was an um, American icon and uh, crossed over from sports into popular culture. Uh, as you know, he's mentioned in quite a number of songs and movies and books and um, 
He's uh, certainly a, a great baseball player. In 1969, he was voted um, the greatest player of the 20th century or in the first 100 years of Major League Baseball. That, that idea has fallen off a little bit as his numbers have given um, you know, more uh, advanced stats, but uh, he's still top 10 baseball players of all time. Now, when it comes to DiMaggio's uh, baseball cards, uh, he's a difficult nut to crack, uh, in large part because of the when he played. Uh, DiMaggio, and, and also the way his relationship with baseball card companies at the end of his career, uh, sadly, uh, he played until 51, which means he could have had a Bowman in 48, 49, 50, or 51. He does not have a Bowman card, which is sad. He does, however, have uh, the one-off wonder Leaf card from 48, 49, as you can see there, um, the third card from the left in my, uh, these are my um, DiMaggio cards. Um, it's, uh, it's a one, and we talked about this in my top 10 video, uh, top 10 Yankees cards videos. It's a one because of the little paper loss in the middle, but it's it uh, presents very well. It's got a uh, nice centering, um, no creases, so it's a pretty nice card. But anyway, so DiMaggio uh, is in the play ball, uh, 39, 40, and 41 play ball sets. Uh, and those are the only really regular cards he's in. He's got a bunch of cards, oddballs in the 30s. Um, and as you can see, he's got uh, to the left is an exhibit card. Uh, next after that is Bond Bread, which is... Uh, Red Company, obviously, that uh, put out cards in 47, and then uh, afterwards, uh, this is the uh, rounded corners version, which gives you the idea that it's an authentic card. There were later Bond Bread cards that were found that were um, reprints, um, so you've got to be careful with that. And then the far right is 1951 Burke Ross, which I've mentioned about 50 times. I'm building the set. DiMaggio was my first card in that set because it's probably the cheapest DiMaggio card out there. Uh, from playing days, and that's 51, which was his last season. So that's my modest um, DiMaggio collection. But you didn't come here for me. You came here to talk to Ian. So let's uh, let's bring Ian on now. And uh, how are you, Ian? I'm good, Dan. How are you doing? Whoops. There we go. There we go. So uh, tell my viewers as much about yourself as you'd like. Uh, and then we'll get into your DiMaggio collection, which honestly is quite, quite awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, my name's Ian. Um, just kind of my collecting background. Uh, it's kind of a unique, I'd say, and just how I started and came back. Um, as a kid, you know, I think everybody collected around then. You know, I'm 35 years old, so, you know, early 90s, I'm a kid and <laughs> there's cards everywhere. But... I never really went through and open packs, looked for specific cards or anything. Um, what I would do is I had an LCS about 10 minute bike ride from my house. So my friend and I would go there and they sold these 500 count boxes just of random cards. And they were like five to ten dollars for the whole box. And I mean, now I tell you that and I think and you can guess what kind of cards were in there. But yeah, we're all we, junk, junk wax. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I didn't care. We'd each grab a box, we'd grab a Beckett, and we'd go home and we'd literally go through every single card. And you know, this one's five cents, this one's ten cents, and we'd see whose box added up to the most, and then whoever had the highest one got to choose ten cards that they wanted from the other person's box, and then you know, we just enjoy the box and the cards. So in a way it's very pure in how cards were, but a yep. little interesting that I was never, you know, chasing those big stars or the big popular cards that everyone was after. I was totally tuned out of that, but totally into cards at the same time. And then, you know, life happens, Pokemon becomes bigger around my age and sports cards kind of go on the back burner and I came back into the hobby around 2017 so the beginning of 2017 and I remember being at a mall and they had a card show set up and I was like oh cards you know I haven't thought about these for a while and went up to a dealer and just kind of started chatting with them for a little bit and I remember him saying oh you know grab a couple cards bring them home and I was like no you know I, I got nothing no no reason to have cards and you know thanks for the chat though and then i went home and it, it kind of like planted that little seed in my mind and i'm like that's oh, all it takes really cool and 
yeah, I just dove right in on the modern side of things and, you know, devoured every product that came out, everything I had, every piece of media I could read or watch. I just kind of jumped right in and did that for a few years. And then around 2020 is when I kind of really shifted to the, to the vintage side of things mm-hmm. and this, you know, modern's cool has its place in the hobby. We need it. You know, I'm not going to make this a modern versus vintage thing. You know, the great design still enjoy it, but there's just something about the vintage cards that just, when I got those, it was just a whole other feeling than when I was buying the modern guys. So completely shifted hundred percent vintage at this point in time. And, you know, just kind of haven't really looked back. Well, that that's, uh, I mean, I feel like that's kind of a, uh, typical story of of guys not only your age but guys my age i mean i came in and out of the hobby like three times um and the most recent was yeah around 2017 2018 um so i see the mariners in the background and uh, the mariners hat so i'm assuming based on your age uh that this you were like a griffy guy right well i was actually an a-rod guy which gets me oh, uh, okay gets All me right. a lot of crap these days but no <laughs> Obviously, loved Griffey too, but A Rod was my guy. I guess when I said 100% vintage, I was fibbing a little bit. I'm 99.9% vintage because I still got a good handful of A Rod cards, which I keep hitting. <laughs> well, um, you know, A Rod also has got some New York blood these days. So um, I don't know. I don't want to talk about A Rod, but it's, a, it's an interesting relationship he has with the Yankees fans, I would say. So, um, all right. So DiMaggio, why, why DiMaggio? That's, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm curious about because for me, it's like I said in, in the opening, he's, you know, he's a New York Yankee legend who, you know, I, I saw him on television all the time when I was a little kid and, and he's sort of bigger than bigger than life kind of character. But from a kid, uh, you know, a nineties, a two thousands kid from, uh, from, you know, the West coast, Northwest, how, how does DiMaggio become like your, your one of your super collector players? Yeah, so while I've grown up in the Seattle area, I was actually born in Queens, um, and my family grew up in New York. So sure, I didn't have that, you know, watching Yankees growing up, but my family did, and they were huge Yankees fans. So, you know, I grew up hearing about players like DiMaggio, Whitey Ford, Mickey Mantle. So those are the players I'm hearing about and learning about from, you know, my family, my dad, that sort of thing. So I still had a large understanding of them, but I really just love collecting players that have that legend and, you know, mystique to them. And you pretty much took the words right out of my mouth verbatim. He's not just a baseball player. I mean, he was an American icon, basically. And just when I think Joe DiMaggio, it's just like, okay, that name you know, has something behind it. That's not just one of the greatest players of all time. I mean, he's famous. He's hugely famous, larger than life. And yep. there's the obvious things like, you know, the hitting streak, which will never be broken, you know, 56 games. And that's something that will always keep him in, you know, the forefront of baseball, but just, you know, New York in the forties and fifties, America rising, just all of that stuff that he is tied to in my mind, just really, brings me something special when i get his cards so the cards let's uh let's pull them up here let me see if i got the right screen there we go look at that so i saw this picture i don't know a few months ago um maybe a little different you had a card or two different but um i had a little bit of a a, a, you know quick breath to take because i'm (laughs) like oh jesus (laughs) this guy look at this i'm uh you know i got the four dimashio cards and and trust me it took me a while to get those because he's he's an expensive card. His cards are not distributed very much. Um, he, can't, he comes in that period, like I said, in that period where cards really aren't being produced. And, you know, he was a little bit of a cranky personality. So I'm imagining <laughs> that uh, when it came to Bowman, you know, this brand new card company coming in at the end of his career, he was like, nah, I'm, you, know, you know, there's no money you can give me to, to, to make me, uh, you know, go along with this. So unfortunately... He could have three Bowman cards, which would be absolutely amazing, but mm-hmm. unfortunately they're not. So let's let's talk about what you got here. So um, just briefly, so we're talking like three years of collecting here, right? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, about three years. So, I mean, he doesn't have the Bowmans, which is very unfortunate, but he does have a lot of kind of oddballs, which kind of go in my favor. I'm a big fan of oddballs. So that leaves a lot of options and premiums and picture packs, which you can see in the back. But yeah, it's just pretty much, you know, around three years and just kind of stumbling along things and do a lot of my buying on eBay, Facebook, Twitter, and just never really searching out a specific card. They just kind of, you know, always on the hunt for anything I don't have or that I haven't seen before. Yeah, we uh, were twins with this guy. Um, the, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 1.5s, Bond Red, both authentic, both in SGC cases. Uh, I've got a crease, uh, a 1.5 kind of crease right along here, and you've got the guy in his, um, you know, in his hat there. But see, this card for me, um, I, I knew Bond Bread has existed. You know, it's more people talk about the Jackie Robinsons. Um, but this showed up in a, in a, a love of the game auction, which I know Al, Al's a great guy. And this auction, um, I saw it and I, I started bidding on it. I'm thinking to myself, oh shit, I'm never going to get this. Like, and I ended up getting it at like a really reasonable price. So I'm not going to ask you how much you paid, but where did you get that card? Yeah, mine was just, um, just actually on eBay. So, um, you know, searching through, saw it and pretty much smashed that buy button. Uh, yeah. It's not something you really see too often at yeah. a reasonable price, especially on, you know, eBay. But it was kind of one of those lucky things and one of those things where maybe I overpaid at the time, but, you know, turned out to be a good thing in the long run. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think we, I don't think either one of us, no matter what we paid, overpaid because I think that card is going to be, I mean, I'm, the, the way it's leaving my collection is when I croak, basically. Um, I'm never selling it unless, of course, I, some like upgrade comes into my, my lap. But you and I, I think, are the only people who have this card of anybody that I know. It's really not very well distributed and it's a great photo. I see you do have the, um, you have the, I guess it's probably like a type two of that photo uh, in the middle in the back. Um, you know, it's an iconic photo. So I, I don't see that card ever going down in value. And I think it's just going to incrementally go up. Yeah, I like the photo too. The back there, that's actually the picture packs, the Yankees picture oh, packs. Right, picture yeah, packs. That's right. right, 47, 48. Um, mm -hmm. Now to the left of that is a card I'm not familiar with. Um, I, I think it's a blue tint or something like that. The, the, yeah, uh, that's the R three four six blue tent. Let me see if I can kind of hold that up for you without a glare. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, kind of that stoic image that he's <laughs> famous for, called blue yep. tent for the obvious blue tent of the lettering. Uh, to my knowledge, no one's really sure still who distributed it. Um, just kind of one of those mysterious hand cut cards, but um, just kind of lucky to come across one of those. That's probably my most recent DiMaggio pickup, I believe, uh, yeah. just from a, you know, Twitter, Twitter buddy. Um, oh, nice. But it was nice to find one that wasn't all washed out. They tend to have a washed out photo on those. And so that was nice enough that I wanted to grab that. I, I had a bid in on a um, Mize from this uh, set and lost. Um, I think that these are, are underappreciated and certainly rare. So, I can only imagine what you paid for the DiMaggio version of it. Now, to the right, I see is the um, 1941 uh, double play card there. Um, is that the one with Charlie Keller? I can't. I think that's yeah. Charlie Keller. Yeah. yeah, that's Keller with him. Another card that I've tried to get and failed. Um, let's see. What else? Are there? We have slides coming up uh, with, with closer pictures of some of these, but the only one left there's a couple more left that i want to talk about that are not in the slides the one is the bottom it's on its back um to the right of the exhibits card um that looks like an auto to me uh which to the oh yeah that's a yeah that's a tcma card from like the 80s and then autoed uh by him so not a playing days but but, you know, but a, which i'll yeah, take <laughs> a dna certified autograph there's some to the right of that is I guess one of those um, is that a Gaudi like a one of those Gaud late thirties Gaudi cards? Yeah, one of with... those thirties uh, Gaudis uh, with McCarthy. Is that going to go in for a grading? <laughs> so 
they're very delicate and it was always going to be a one um which right. if you look at my collection i don't mind but i was taken out of its sleeve and i actually put a little rip in it and every oh. collective nightmare they're so delicate but kind of held me off on that i mean at some point it'll probably go in with a larger submission and just go along for the ride but not in any any rush after that <laughs> up upper left now I, I think i know what those what that is i've seen those before you see the upper left there it's like a circular thing yeah that's the all-star pinups pin um, okay. yeah 50s i think 1950 i think yeah. um I've seen yeah, it came in little yeah. little discs and kind of like a folder or binder almost. Yeah, I know there's like a Ted Williams I, one. I've never seen one of those in person, and it's a little bigger than I thought. I think the Ted Williams is one that I've seen, like it's maybe not at shows, but in people's like collections. Um, and then the other, the last thing to look at on this big photo is um, to the left of the Lucky to Be a Yankee is a card that I don't recognize at all. Uh, that is the 1947 Sports Exchange. Oh, okay. Wow, I literally um, never that card before. <laughs> yeah, so there's a there's big version of it, and then there's the this is kind of the smaller version of it, and it was distributed. I think it was like the Trading Post distributed them. Um, I believe it is, but uh, they look to be hand cut. Uh, has a nice green border around it, which. I actually like having the old SGC label because of that. Normally I relabel those, but because the green matches the green, I kind of like that one. Yeah. Um, yeah that, that one definitely is a, is a rarer one to come across. Yeah. Like I said, I've literally never seen it. I don't even know what that issue is. So good, good on you grab, grabbing that. I don't know. Wait, do you remember where you got it from? That was just a Facebook by just, yeah. you know, I remember just waking up Saturday morning doing the, laying in bed, scrolling before I want to get up and then kind of sitting up like, Oh, what is that? <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I have sort of have some good Facebook groups, like solid real collectors There's like about a half a dozen of them. And I've been members of absolute trash uh, mm -hmm. groups on Facebook too. So I, I, I think it's a, uh, you know, it's a place to get cards that is underrated because people are like, oh, it's all, it's Facebook. It must be crap. But no, there's actually some really good groups. Yeah, you definitely have to wade through the crap. But once you find those groups that have kind of the consistent sellers and stuff, it's, well, it's still one of my top places yeah. to buy. Yeah, I got, uh, I, well, we'll talk about Matthewson, but that's where I got my Matthewson, unbelievably. So, all right. So let's go into the biggies. So a couple of things. First is, I want to talk about the background, which I've seen this many, many times um, because I've seen you post cards and, you know, we've we've sold and back and forth. And But that background, where does that come from with the baseballs? So it's actually just a photo. Um, my father took it and uh, he was just walking down the street and uh, there was a box of baseballs and a window and a shop window and he thought it looked cool and he took a picture and... Uh, he kind of blew it up and I had a 16 by 20 in my office. And then I was like, hey, you know, that'd kind of be a cool background. And it, it is it one of the and... best. It's one of the best backgrounds of anybody who else, whose cards I see. So kudos Thank to your you. dad for taking that photo and for you for recognizing how cool it is. Because, you know, it just has this sort of old school baseball, like, uh, you know, there's a, and there's a feel to it. There's like a real feel to it to like the actual balls themselves so i'm like this is really cool i gotta come up with something better than my couch <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was trying the light box thing and i get all the glare and then you know i'm doing the carpet and i really wanted everything kind of you know uniform and looking good together so yeah i'm it, glad that glad that you like that it's yeah it's i think it's a it's one of my favorite things about senior cards, other than the cards themselves. So let's talk about Joe DiMaggio, 1936 National Chickle. Um, I've got a few of these, but I don't have the DiMaggio. I've got a few lesser guys, but this is, uh, this is, I guess, could be called a rookie card, right? Yeah, it is considered uh, one of his rookie cards, and you know you can get into the which one was first, and it wasn't this one, but I will still take the rookie card designation for this, and. I mean, first, I just want to mention, I mean, just, just look at that shot. I mean, that's just, 
I mean, some of these oversized cards are just, you, you can't match the, the images that they're giving you. I mean, the umpire, the catcher, yeah. him and stride, just and, perfect and image. The centering is like the catcher's arms are like right in the middle of the photo, which yeah. is great. The other thing is DiMaggio is wearing number 18, which yep. of course his number spring five training. is retired for decades. So spring, yep, this training, is a spring training shot. 36, which would be his rookie year before he even played a game in the major leagues. Yeah, so that kind of adds to the card there, having such an early image. Uh, this was actually my first DiMaggio card, so I kind of yeah. <laughs> kind of started started big, and yeah, I, I kind of stumbled backwards into it. Uh, I had I had bought a Red Heart Mantle off eBay, and it got lost, Ooh. or the, the seller couldn't find it. So so I bought one Red Heart Mantle got lost in the mail, seller refunded, bought another one from another seller. He couldn't locate it. So he refunded and then offered to give me a discount on another card. Um, so at that point I was like, okay, this yeah. isn't meant to be no, no red heart mantle, but you know, I want to, I want to do something good, something big. So I looked through his inventory, had this, gave me a good deal on it. And that kind of launched the, the DiMaggio PC. Did so he, kinda, uh was, accidentally was, went into it was it slabbed when he when you bought it or did you put it you um, no, it was, yeah it was already slabbed yeah i saw there was a um in philly i don't know if, i don't know a couple of years ago there was a guy with a collection of early dimaggio and i remember seeing this so um i have a pretty good idea of how much you paid for it mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's not uh, it's not cheap uh so and we got these two the we talked about the uh, the bond bread a little bit um before which is fun that the, both of us have the same card same holder same grade um but the guy on the right is um is another one now i have a couple of these cards i have the johnny mize version of uh the propagandist and which was in my johnny mize video and i also have joe cronin which will be coming up in my cronin video which will be i don't know months from now whenever i get around to it but dimaggio obviously this is playing days so it's a biggie these cards are like paper, um, mm -hmm. so it's really hard to get one that that presents this well. And you know, obviously, there's some damage to the lower right and stuff. On, on, presents terrific to me. Um, so tell me, tell me about this card, where you got it, and uh, how you feel about this, because I, I actually love this card. Um, it's now on my list. Yeah, no, I I love this set. I mean, it's one of my top ten sets. I'd say. I mean, it's a mixture between retired stars and uh, you know, current players. And it just kind of goes back to what we were saying about he was just a larger than life character. I mean, you know, all the way in Cuba, they're making cards about him and they're making them here. But like you said, they're very delicate, very hard to find in any kind of number grade even. Um, but found this one on, you know, eBay and just kind of lucked out at great eye appeal. Uh, I'll take that right corner all day. And yeah, it's just great looking card. Um, How's the back? Of, uh, the back is not bad. Um, pretty good too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. My my Cronin is a one, but it has like some back issues, and the um, the Mize is also a one, but I think that's just because it's got the same kind of stuff you got here on on Joe D, which is the you know the paper issues. Um, but that that picture the stance and the you know the the swing is not one that i'm terribly familiar with so it's nice to see a card with a different photo in it yeah it's definitely a unique photo i really like you know the black and white with the contrast to the gold borders it's i mean they're just a real good looking set and just yeah kind of has that you know same reason people like the venezuelan cards just they have such a story of you know not just sitting in some kids you know drawer and a family attic but these had to have gone through a lot more to make it to us here oh yeah absolutely so that's a that's a great one so let's look oh yeah there's this uh so this one's a little mysterious to me because i think we talked about this before we went on air it looks like there's a fire behind him um, yeah. and it looks like it's kind of a spring training but I, t tell me tell me what 
what this photo is, where it came from, all, all whatever whatever information you have on it, because uh, it's it's intriguing to me. Yeah, this is just uh, you know a snapshot of him, and normally not something that I I go for, but I've been getting kind of really more into you know these original photos and things lately, and this one was from our our buddy Lucas over on Twitter, and you know king of the snapshots and uh we chatted about this and he got another dimaggio that he liked better and made this available to me and you know the snapshots are cool i mean just this was some fan standing in front of him at spring training probably and it's essentially like a one of one of a a player and it's, you know great clear image nice and close just a lot of snapshots can be far away blurry and this is just framed well great background super sharp image and like i said maybe some kind of fire in the back more <laughs> likely probably some kind of printing issue but i like yeah. to pretend to fire yeah yeah it's like um you know he's just calm old joe d and there's like a freaking fire in the back. <laughs> <laughs> he's not gonna he's not gonna lose his cool um that's the famous thing about DiMaggio is that uh, on the field, he never, ever lost his cool except for once. Um, it was the Al John Frito. I guess it's the 47 World Series. He hit a shot out to left field. And, you know, playing in Yankee Stadium with the, in that time period, it was 430 feet to left center field. So that's part of the reason why his home run numbers are down and his home run numbers are much higher on the road than they are at home during that mm -hmm. period. But anyway, he hits this ball. John Frito goes back and makes this like amazing catch. And as Joe is rounding second, he kicked the dirt. And this was this <laughs> big thing is that Joe had shown some emotion. And so <laughs> like DiMaggio like had this sort of bigger, larger than life kind of feel about him. Even when he was playing, it was taken, taken as something that was out of the ordinary, but this, Two guys in the background. I'm, I'm guessing it's too. They're too small to figure out who they are. Any idea? No. Yeah, it's too. Kind of tried to peek, but yeah, no, no clarity to see that. Yeah, it looks like maybe a first baseman, maybe a lefty. I'm not sure, even sure what year this is. Um, if it's, uh, it's. I mean, he looks. It's probably 40s. Um. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard to say who the who the first baseman was, but um, I think that's that's the end of the slides. But um, really, uh, yeah, we're a little over thirty, which is good because uh, got to go through this, which honestly is my uh, is the picture that uh, kind of took my breath away. So, congrats Thank on you. that. So Thank anyway, you. Ian, uh, thanks a ton for coming on to talk about Joe D. Uh, you are my second super collector guest on this show, so uh, that's uh, pretty awesome. And Honor. I know you're going to be back. Uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, Christy Mathewson, uh, so you'll yep. be back, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, thanks. I'm going to end the recording here, and uh, my listeners uh, and, and viewers, please um, tune in next week for uh, Dan's Vintage Baseball PC. Hopefully we'll have another guest. Um, or something in my collection. But anyway, thanks, Ian. Take care. Okay.